Hey y'all, it's Commander Savannah. So I'm back again. Sorry about that. So I went do went back, sorry, redid the halls of disrepair, got everybody uh transitioned into the next area, luckily. Um so yeah, these last couple of videos, unfortunately, it's just I've gotta trim and merge them. Um it is what it is. It's hard doing recordings with my living situation right now, but that last one wasn't because of that. Shadow Run said derp and I said, Oh no. Who knows? And it just, I, literally, even after I stopped the recording, I tried and it just, it did not happen. So I went back, redid everything. And so now we're finally going to confront Dr. Holmes with quotations underlining bold uh, italics, like everything possible <laughs> to call him out for not really being Dr. Holmes or whatever the case scenario is. So let's go ahead and get started. The Emerald City Ripper. Before you as a medical lab turned torture chamber, the smell of old blood and decayed flesh permeates the room. Gory stains speak of the body's fluids spilled without regard for well-being or hygiene. There are bodies, probably former patients, trapped in hideous machines, enduring horrific experiments. The subjects you can see all appear dead. Any that aren't must wish they were. You've chased Holmes to his lair, just as his face reveals an ugly soul, so does his safe haven, it would seem. Holmes, Silas, the Emerald City Ripper. The elf is a monster beyond compare. It's time to end this. Amen. Yes. Another intercom cackles at your, crackles at your elbow. One solid blow would offer a few moments of blessed silence. But this is also a rare chance to get a word in on the good doctor, who greets you with more of his chittering laughter. You are a persistent one, a fine specimen indeed. Yeah, I mean, come on. Yeah, honestly, I, I, the thing I love about this game is I've noticed I literally love most of the options. A lot of games, it's easy for me to be like, oh yeah, this one. But in this one, there are, I honestly love like all of these. Like we definitely know how this is going to end. Like, I mean, he's just hiding from me. He's just prolonging the inevitable. And like, come, like, come on, face me. Like, why are you hiding behind an intercom? Like, get real. Um, why don't we settle this face to face, friend? <laughs> Few friends for a face such as mine. Though I have one associate I would be happy to introduce you to. Pitzel, subdue them. Or Pitzel, whatever. Wait, is that them? Or... Okay. Oh, it's a curtain! I just wasted an action point. Oh, oh my god. Oh my... Look at that. Wow. That's spooky. Alright, Shannon, let's go ahead and get you over here, honey bun. You need to... Come up here. And we need to go ahead and control. Yes. We need to get you over here. And go ahead. I wonder if he can take a shot through. I don't see why he couldn't. There we go. There we go. We at least got one. Oh my gosh. Whew. That is a big bubba. Big bubba. <laughs> oh man. If I can take some AP, I will. Oh, I feel a sneeze happening again, and I'm trying to avoid it. Whew. Oh no! Shannon! Really, I feel like I should kind of target the little guy next. Um, so I'm gonna bring you around to work on that. And then I'll do Shannon too. And actually you as well. Uh, let's see, I'm trying to 
I don't know if you can get in a shot from there because you were literally right in front of the crate, but. Well, you did some damage. Okay, so for the drone. There we go. Or at least. Okay, that's really a. Uh... I don't know if. to use a repair kit. Oh, oops. Yeah, there we go. I was trying to figure out why it was offering me a shot on... <laughs> Who am I? It's gonna do it with my girl. Oh, cool, it went back to her. No. Let's just go and take another shot. We're halfway there. There we go. I hate that I kind of put her right where he's at, but... And you need to reload. Whew. Can't you do anything right, Pytzel? I mean, I don't know why you're mad at you, bro. Like, you're the one hiding this entire time. You're ridiculous. Ooh, he's kind of got a good chunk of health, too. Uh, yeah, I don't want to... <laughs> I don't know why I laugh. <laughs> Just... Oh no, she did six damage. Well, I did a total of 12, which is nice, but... Oh my gosh. Oh man, my drone is gonna be complete dunzo. Oh, that was so worth it. I know that was kind of pushing it, but... Ooh, jeez. Hmm. No, I'd rather, at this point, I'd rather maybe be closer to get some shots on him. Body. All right, let's come back here and get some shots on this guy. Now nah, we'll talk to him after we take out his buddy. Get her healed up. All right, Shannon. Let's go and get you closer. And let's just get some shots on him. Hi, Boogaboo. There we go. I'm surprised he didn't have anything for us. So I'm wanting to, I don't know if it's, if I get close enough, if it automatically will. <sighs> Just kind of wanted to see if there's anything else to, so I imagine we got to talk to him first. Okay, let's go ahead and talk to the creep. Uh... 
Holmes drops to the ground, the light in his eyes fading fast. But something keeps the shriveled husk of his soul stuck to this mortal coil for a few moments more. This is a place of broken things. I remake them. She... She asks me to remake her. Jessica! I know you're talking about Jessica! He manages one more laugh, his glazed eyes rolling toward a workbench across the way. She was playing both of us. Yay! We get three action points! I know this guy's dying right now, but I'm so excited! Plus one action point. Your experience has increased your ability to operate in dangerous situations. Then, like, with a final bloody whimper or something. I should have read it first, but I'm honestly tickled pink. I get three action points now. Uh, okay, so he did look at the workbench, so let's inspect it. Holmes workbench falls somewhere between corner slab and medieval torture device. It is decorated in the many colors of death and littered with the instruments of that trade. To one side, there is a leather bound journal stuffed with uneven pages. To the other is a pock sack, its small screen still glowing. Beneath the bench is a rolled sheaf of papers held closed with a tied length of surgical tubing. So let's go ahead and look at the workspace. The bench has clearly played host to numerous bodies over its lifetime. It includes limb restraints, as well as skeletal traction mechanisms. At this table, Holmes likely dismembered bodies, or quite possibly put them back together. The tackiness of the blood suggests it has been used relatively recently. Now let's skim the journal. Leafing through the pages, you find few intelligible entries. Holmes may not have been a real doctor, but his handwriting certainly fits the stereotype. Stuffed in the last few pages is a copy of a disinterment order from a local cemetery with the grave's occupant marked as Melinda Watts. Hmm. So Sam, Melinda, Jessica, these are all Watts. These are all connected. This is all pinning to Jessica. Let's access the pocket secretary. Holmes is still logged in, granting you access to his currently loaded files. Prominent among them is a hospital report from a donor program. It lists the organs beside the names and vital statistics of the recipients. Your eye catches Sam Watt's name beside the entry for liver. Also on the list are the Ripper's other known victims, along with several others who may have shared in the same fate. There is also a large sum of new yen which can be easily transferred to your account. Thank you! So let's look at the rolled sheet of paper. Unfurling the large sheet of paper, you discover a diagram of the human female form rendered to an impressive level of detail. It appears to be the blueprint for making Holmes' very own monster. Alright, so let's leave the workbench. This is all pointing to Jessica. It's I cannot, unless there is some hidden character. That kumquat. What the? On that note. <coughs> Excuse me. Um. The male Benraku? His chip slot is still fresh. The open wound pink and wet and lurid. His voice drips innuendo, but his eyes say nobody's home. Well, hello there. Did you come to play? Are you okay? How long have you been here? Of course we're okay. We're ready for a little party. You want to have a little play party with me? By your name. <laughs> She's assembled in a standard config. Face of a schoolgirl, body of a stripper. You need some thick beer goggles to miss the work she's had done. That is so freaking sad. No, why would I, you know, it's one of those things, it's like a double-edged sword. So if we clear that, are they aware of like what they've been used for and have to live through that trauma the rest of their lives? But at the same time, like, I could not leave them to this fate. That is just disgusting. I'm going to erase it. Like, I feel like you don't win either way, but if I was in that situation, I would want someone to free me from that because that is absolute torture. 
Oh God, I feel bad, but I, 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 it's wrong. His eyes focus, and his hand raises slowly to touch his head wound. The fingers come away wet and sticky. Panic twitches at the corners of his mouth as he surveys the room. First you, then the girl, then down to his own body, which is no longer his. Sweet Jesus, what did he do? What am I? He began sweeping, his body racked in great, inconsolable, heaving sobs. See, I feel terrible either way because now he's aware of it, but I, I just, it's disgusting. I, 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 I don't, I would feel as just as guilty either way. But if it was me, I just imagine how I would be in real life. I would hope someone would free me of that despite what I would have to live through. I would rather be free of that because that is disgusting. But again, I just, to me, that's one of those, you don't win either way. It's just crappy regardless. And that's not even a sufficient turn at all, but ah, oh God, that's disgusting. As you approach the exit, you realize that Shannon lingers quite a few steps behind. Looking back, you see that she is half turned, looking pensively toward the horror show of Holmes' lab. Finally feeling your eyes on her, she faces you and raises her head in a proud, almost defiant manner. We have done much good here tonight. We have removed two vile creatures from this world, and so ended a growing shadow they cast upon the city. Our paths crossed and joined, and we did this thing together. But now here, our paths must divide. I could sure use your help with what's coming. And I'm sure I could use your help with what I must do next. Oh no. A distant cry of pain echoes down from somewhere above, and the young shaman pauses to listen to the tortured sound. There is still more work to be done for both of us, but what must be done differs for each of us. I came here to find justice for my brother, and that has been done. His spirit can now find rest, but there are other victims of the Ripper, both alive and dead, who still struggle to be at peace. Many of them are here in this place, filling the halls with their torment. I cannot leave them behind. But the spirits have something else in store for you, a different path. You must finish what you've begun. You must confront the first evil that fostered the one we have just ended. I suppose I can respect that. Thank you. Thank you for everything. Because of you, my brother's killer has met swift justice, and justice of the only sort such as such a man as Holmes deserved, death. I will now set to the task of healing those he left, has left behind. For every madman we faced here tonight, there are a dozen innocent souls crying out in need. The spirits of the departed will also need help in passing, or else I fear they may become like those we met in the hangar. They all deserve my help. And what about Lone Star? They can't be far behind. When they enter that room back there, they will have no thoughts other than thoughts of promotion. With the Ripper in hand, my brother will be forgotten, along with all the other victims. But so too will I. They will not be a problem. Whether that's true or not, Shannon's confidence and very presence seem capable of making it true. Good luck to you, Savannah. I hope you can find the same justice for your friend that I have found for my brother. Thank you, Shannon. I respect. Like, I get it. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and end this here because I can't remember how long the previous recording is, but this is gonna run on close to 20 minutes. So I'm going to stop today because my dog has his chew toy and he's being needy and I did tell him I would take him for a walk, so I need to go do that. But I will catch you guys next time. Um, so this is 16. I hope I've got all the numbers right this time. I think I do. If not, I will of course correct it in the comments. But I think next, finally, we're gonna, to me, this is all leading to Jessica and we still have not attended the funeral. So I imagine that's next of what we're going to do. But I do feel like we're at the light at the end of the tunnel, so to speak. We are nearing the end as hard as that is because so much, when you really sit there and think about, especially after what has just transpired and everything this is all being done for, not that it would ever be right, but it's just, 
it's eerie, it's wrong, it is unjust, it is not okay, and it bothers me, and I am, I will be happy to finish this. Because, like, Shanna has, she's got a great point. I would love to have her, but it makes sense with her staying and tending, and I would rather her do that because someone needs to, and she's willing, and, you know, she's definitely got a good heart, and I respect her, so we will leave her to it. Hopefully, we will team up with Jake or Coyote or Paco again. Um, possibly. I feel like we might get Coyote's help again. I would love it. I love Coyote. I just think she's so cool, even though I gave her a derby accent. Um, but I'm going to save here. And I don't know if we'll go to Union and then the funeral. Probably. Um, I'm not sure. We'll figure it out next time. I'm going to play again in a couple days. So I'm pretty, pretty excited. Um, but I will just see you guys then. And have a good one. Bye.